Breaking news now on 1010 Winds. Good afternoon. Here's the scenario right now as we have it at a little after 1 o'clock. It was about four hours ago, a little before that, when one plane, apparently a hijacked American airliner, crashed into one of the towers at the World Trade Center. Then about a half hour later, a second plane crashed into the other tower. And then about an hour and a half after that happened, the top parts of both towers collapsed, one before the other. A unknown number of people died when those planes went into the buildings and then perhaps in the collapses if they were not able to get out of the building after the first hits by those airplanes. We have no idea how many people died, and we also have no idea how many people were injured, but it could be running into the thousands. There was a direct hit at the Pentagon. Apparently was a commercial airliner that was hijacked. It might be United Airlines plane that United says that it lost, that went down. Another United Airlines plane crashed near Pittsburgh. That plane was Flight 93. That was flying out of Newark. It was heading to San Francisco, and uh, so we've had at least four planes hijacked and four down, and in each case, apparently, there were passengers aboard those four planes. We'll hear about the Pentagon and what happened there in a moment. Other things happening in Washington. And, uh, but first, let's get an update on the travel situation because things are jammed up or not happening at all. Here's, ten, here's uh, Matt Ward. Well, Ralph, as you know, the airports remain closed off. Uh, Jersey Transit, no rail service, Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coast Line, Raritan Valley Line, uh, Amtrak also disrupted on the Northeast Carter. Just limited service on both Long Island Railroad out of New York City and on Metro North trains out of New York City. If you're trying to get a boat back over to Jersey, you do have ferry service available running at Pier 11 and also at West 30th Street. Battery tunnels still closed off either way, as are the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges. The Verrazano is closed getting to Brooklyn, but open to Staten Island. Throgsneck, Whinestone, and Triborough are open if you need to get to Queens, and so are the Queensboro Bridge and the Midtown Tunnel, but they're all closed coming into Manhattan, and all the Hudson River crossings still closed off either way. I don't see any traffic moving on the Cross Bronx, westbound into the George Washington Bridge, and I still don't spot any traffic up on the George Washington Bridge in either direction. Ralph? All right, 1010 Winds reporter, uh, shadow reporter uh, Matt War with an update on traffic. Uh, 1010 Winds senior correspondent Stan Brooks is in lower Manhattan. Stan? Yeah, uh, just the chaos here. People running around. They still don't know where to go. I found some people who we hear from Norway, and they were staying in an apartment right near the World Trade Center. We are visiting my nephew, her son. Yeah. And we, are, we, we heard the big bang. This morning, it's close to Trade Center, and we have this little child here, so we were really terrified. But we have stayed indoors, taping our windows for a long time. But now, actually, they uh, said on television we had to move north. So that's why we are evacuating the child and ourselves. Did you hear the explosion? Yes, very well. It was really something very special. The building was uh, shaking all over. So terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying sound, because... We thought maybe it was some construction going on, but we heard it wasn't. It was very bad sound, much louder, much louder. Very loud, very scary, very shaking, and they were still shaking as they were wheeling the baby carriage with their little uh, son, uh, not knowing where they were going, just evacuating the area, trying to get to a safe place. And in, right now, uh, nobody seems to know where a safe place is, but they were all heading north. Stan Brooks, 1010 Winds, reporting live from Lower Manhattan. A plane going overhead, making people nervous. All right, Stan Brooks, and uh, we have some information here. A Virginia congressman is estimating the death toll at around 10,000. Now, where I don't know where this man is getting this from, or Jim, Congressman Jim Moran, but that's an estimate from a congressman. I don't know what that is based on. Out of Washington, he's talking to big Out of Washington. Plane crashes. About the plane crashes at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Maybe a combined of 10,000, according to this Virginia congressman. Again, we do expect to hear from President Bush momentarily. Uh, the president has uh, said the military's on full alert, and once we hear from the president, we'll hear from the FBI to tell us what they know about this terror attack. Just to repeat, two planes, hijacked planes, American Airlines planes crashing into the World Trade Center. They later collapsed. Casualties there. Another Another plane, apparently a hijacked, a United Airlines plane going into the Pentagon, casualties there, and another United plane crashing uh, southeast of Pittsburgh with casualties there as well. That plane flew out of Newark, a United flight heading from Newark to uh, San Francisco. Let's hear about the Pentagon and other things happening in Washington. Here's 1010 Winds reporter Doug O'Brien. Uh, Ralph, first we want to relay to you a statement from uh, the Taliban, the hardliners in Afghanistan that condemn the devastating terrorist attack in New York and Washington on Tuesday, rejecting suggestions that Osama bin Laden was behind them. 
The Taliban's ambassador to neighboring Pakistan, Abdul Salam Saif, said bin Laden, the Saudi dissident, of course, who's been given asylum in Afghanistan, does not have the facilities to carry out such an attack. It's uh, premature to all uh, to level allegations against a person who's not in a position to carry them out, is what he said. UN sanctions currently in place against Afghanistan to press the Taliban to hand over bin Laden. We also have a statement from Hamas in the West Bank. They say, quote, first of all, we don't support attacks on civilians and don't support aggression toward innocent people. However, the United States should revise its current stance as to look again at its position very carefully toward people all over the world. If the U.S. doesn't want to be targeted and suffer the same way as other people are through aggression, oppression, injustice, and exploitation. In that regard, America finds itself today weakened in the face of the rest of humanity taking its own revenge against American oppression and injustice. That from Hamas in the West Bank. In Washington, a direct and devastating hit on the Pentagon and now reports of dead people. In the military seat of power in the U.S., a fiery plane crash believed to be an airliner collapsed one side of the five-sided structure opposite the office of Defense Secretary Rumsfeld. There are casualties, and one television station in Washington says it's been told by um, a Navy spokesman that, in fact, there are dead people in the Pentagon. News Channel... Fox News Channel correspondent David Schuster says smoke is still coming from the building. When we arrived here, we started getting reports uh, from uh, from people inside the Pentagon of, of, on the south side, on the outer ring. And remember, there are five or six different rings of offices at the Pentagon uh, of, uh, of a ball of fire, of a large explosion, approximately 940. At first, there were some conflicting accounts about whether an airplane was actually involved because a lot of people in the Pentagon did not hear an airplane flying overhead. Uh, but then witnesses outside of the Pentagon who had a clear vantage point of the uh, of the, of the helipad described a silver and red U.S. airplane, according to the eyewitnesses, described as a 737 that flew too low and crashed uh, into the side. Intellig counterintelligence sources are confirming to Fox News that it was a commercial aircraft uh, that, uh, that was apparently hijacked and, and flown into the Pentagon. Washington is jammed with people who've been sent home early, just like lower Manhattan businesses and government closing up and dismissing their workers, the sidewalks teeming with pedestrians making their way toward bus stops and metro subway stations. Metro trains crowded, the streets packed with cars. For the most part, people are making their way in a calm, orderly fashion, though there is a sense of purpose there. There are lines at ATMs and public phones, as many people report having trouble getting signals on their wireless phones. Someone mentioned, Ralph, a few moments ago that people were nervous after hearing an airplane go overhead in Manhattan. Bear in mind that when the airport closures nationwide were ordered, there were some 50 aircraft still in in the air, those are being allowed to proceed to their destinations. There may yet be a plane or two in the air today headed toward a New York airport from somewhere else. They have been allowed to continue on and land as normal. Ruff? All right, Doug O'Brien with an update there. You're listening to live continuing coverage on 1010 winds of the terrorist attack here in New York and elsewhere in the country. Uh, two planes, uh, hijacked American Airlines planes, apparently crashing into the World Trade Center. Uh, one before 9 o'clock, a little after that, and then about an hour and a half later, the top portions of both those towers collapse. We have no idea what the casualties might be. There's a congressman. We're not sure where he might be getting his information from, but overall, talking about a death toll of around 10,000. This is Virginia Congressman Jim Moran. Perhaps he's been talking to federal officials, talking about casualties in New York as well as at the Pentagon and the four planes that apparently were hijacked and have crashed today, two American and two United. Let's go live to 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones. Al? Well, Doug was mentioning planes flying overhead, and every time one of these planes comes over, and there aren't that many, but they attract a lot of attention, a lot more than probably, say, five hours ago. People stop and stare, even they'll get a little scared when they hear a plane go over. An unusual response here in New York. All right, Al, we're going to interrupt you right here. We're going to listen to what... Oh, never mind, Al. Al, go ahead. We thought it was the president, but it is not. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Al. Nope, not the president yet. Uh, rather, you also mentioned that there's a sort of calm down here, and that's right. Uh, it's, it's kind of amazing that only four hours after this occurred that people are almost starting to go about their normal business. Some of the stores are opening. Some of the folks are, you know, heading back to work. Obviously, the big office buildings are all closed. Government's closed. People are being asked to leave the area, but for the most part, it's rather orderly. A lot of people just sitting around kind of taking it all in. Now, before the second collapse early this morning, I ran into Tom Colden, who was shuffling up West Broadway, absolutely covered, head to toe, with ash and debris. We're at my desk like everybody else. The building swayed. We almost knocked over our feet. And we heard on the way down the stairs that it was a small plane that hit. It took us about an hour and a half to get down to the main concourse. At that point, another huge explosion went off. I have no idea what time it was. The ceiling fell down and the lights went out. 
you okay? Colden, no, not okay. Very shaken up. He was on the 64th floor of World Trade Tower Number 1 when the first plane crashed. Ironically, Colden was also here seven years ago. He said three people that he know perished in that uh, terrorist attack, and right now he's just totally concerned with people he works with, people he knows, people in the building who didn't get out. Ralph? All right, that's 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones. I'm going to give you a recap where we are right now, then we'll look at travel in this area. What's not happening, because planes basically shut down around the country. They're open at the airports just for people to land. A lot of rail service is not happening around New York as we there and some of the bridges and so on. All right, we're going to go to uh, President Bush here. To save lives. President Bush. And to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. Well, that is President Bush. Now, that, by the way, just to point out what is going on, was actually taped earlier. The president made that statement. It was videotaped. We just heard it. And here, it was just played on the networks as well. And then the president was actually moved. We don't know where the president is. He was out of Washington at the time of these terror attacks. Uh, he was in Florida. And then he was moved. We heard or was told to Louisiana, where I think he made that statement, which was taped, which we just heard on 1010 Winds, uh, saying the military is on high alert and also that we are being tested and we will meet that test. The president is speaking there, but we, he apparently is being obviously well protected and perhaps even being moved around today as a precaution. I'm not sure if Matt Ward is still there now because he's got an update on travel. If not, we've got plenty of reporters standing by. Matt? All right, Ralph, we do uh, want to remind everyone that there's limited service on Metro North out of Manhattan. Same story with Long Island Railroad, so if that's uh, the way you're headed, you could certainly avail yourself of that. If you're trying to get back to New Jersey, it's been very difficult. Can't do it across the Hudson right now. I've been watching the George Washington Bridge and still don't see any traffic uh, across that uh, span and the Cross Bronx at an absolute standstill coming up towards the bridge area as well. You can avail yourself of some ferry service running out of uh, Pier 11 or also West 30th Street heading over to New Jersey. Police have been closing down the westbound LIE northern and southern state on Long Island heading up towards the Queens line. Now the Thrysnake, Whitestone and Trauber are open for those getting into Queens. Same story with the Queensboro Bridge and the Midtown Tunnel, but you cannot get into Manhattan along those venues. And the Battery Tunnel, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg bridges are also closed off as is the Verrazano heading to Brooklyn, but it is open to Staten Island. Ralph, back to you. Okay, that is Matt Ward with the latest. Uh, now, here's, just if you just joined us, just to quickly recap, because I know you might have just dialed in and not known this or want a quick update, but we had two planes, apparently hijacked American Airlines planes, crashing into the tops of the World Trade Center this morning, later the tops of those two towers collapsing. They're no longer part of the New York skyline. Huge gaping holes at first, and what sounded like more explosions, perhaps just the collapsing sound, but they did collapse the top portions of the World Trade Center. An unknown number of casualties. The city has 50 hospitals in service right now. Just one hospital alone had 50 people people taken there. But we have no idea at this point how many people may have died at the World Trade Center or how many people might be injured. There was an attack, apparently a commercial plane that had been hijacked as well, perhaps a United plane that was missing, going into the Pentagon, uh, causing a fire there, collapsing one of the five walls of the Pentagon, and uh, casualties there as well. And then another plane, a United plane that had flown out of Boston, went down southeast to Pittsburgh with people aboard that plane. So in all four planes, apparently hijacked, all with passengers aboard, and used in this terror attack today. Today. 
Now, uh, Virginia Congressman Jim Moran is estimating, and we're not sure what this is based on, but estimating the death toll at around 10,000 here in New York. Police have no estimate in the sense, but one official says it's got to be in the thousands, the casualty toll here in New York. A lot of people are very, very worried, of course, about loved ones at the World Trade Center and friends and family and co-workers. Communication's a huge problem today. The Internet is very slow. A lot of cell phones are not working. You're getting busy signals all around Manhattan. That makes it even harder. 1010 Winds reporter Mona uh, Rivera has been talking with some people very concerned. Mona? Well, New York City, as you know, has kept schools open during this whole tragedy, and I just spoke with the Board of Ed and have some information for parents who are worried. They're very afraid. How are my kids going to get home? Are they safe? Some high school students at Clara Barton High School in Brooklyn say they just walked out even though they weren't officially dismissed. Everybody's leaving school. Everybody's going to go pick up their kids at school because the train's not working and everybody has to walk home. There's no way for anybody to get home. Everybody's scared, crying, picking up their kids at school and everybody's trying to get home. So the Board of Ed has just issued some procedures for dismissal. They're trying to keep things as normal as possible, keeping a lot of staff on duty. For students with Metro cards, the Board of Ed says they will remain in school until the transit system is going again. And the Board of Ed spoke with the mayor. The mayor assured them that he will be restoring subway service. The city will be restoring subway service shortly. So hopefully kids with Metro cards will be able to go home on the subway. Kids who go home on yellow school buses, one slight variation. They will be allowed to board school buses. They're going to hope to get the school buses to the schools, but children will be not dropped off unless a parent or an approved guardian is at the bus stop waiting for the child. If there is no one waiting for the child, the school bus will take the child to a designated school in the district that will be designated as a shelter. They are opening late shelter conditions at several schools for parents who normally pick up their children. Parents who normally pick up their children can pick up their child. Only people approved by the Board of Ed and by the school to pick up children will be allowed to pick up children. Any child left in the school will be able to stay at the school. Principals are staying late, assistant principals are staying late, and schools will be open late to allow children to stay there. For special ed kids with physical handicaps, yellow buses, many of the yellow buses have been diverted for emergency operations. So some special ed kids may be dropped off late, parents are told, and if uh, they will be dropped off late, that the principal will be notifying parents about that. So there's a lot of worry. Kids are in school. No one really knows what's going on. Parents are calling schools, coming to schools, dropping kids off, trying to pick them up, and hopefully the Board of Ed says that uh, they need everybody's help to try to get through today's close. So the main part is, Mona, though, that kids are, for this time, going to be staying, in other words, keeping the schools open so the kids are not going into the streets somewhere. Well, yes, although you, you heard I spoke to these kids. They just left their school. Yes. So uh, but theoretically, they're, theoretically supposed to stay they're supposed to stay in the schools, yes. All right, Mona, thank you very much. Uh, CUNY announcing that all afternoon and evening classes have been uh, canceled, and uh, Greyhound just about canceling all inner city bus service. Uh, not much transportation in around uh, New York and around the country. The airlines have shut down as well, basically, because uh, they're just not flying any planes out of the airports. We should point out our coverage here in 1010 Winds is now being simulcast on uh, one of our sister stations, 90.92.3 K Rock. So we welcome you to our continuing coverage here on 1010 Winds of this awful terror attack here in New York at the Pentagon, and uh, we hope nowhere else around in this country. The president has spoken, saying we are being tested. We'll meet that test. The president is saying the military is in high alert. The president himself is whereabouts not really known. That's being kept sec uh, secret for precautionary measures. Uh, let's go live to 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. As you start to see some video or even imagine as what we've been talking about is like a battle zone in parts of the city, uh, emergency people coming in, other people evacuating. Let's get more about that as we go live to uh, 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum. Steve? Well, Ralph, it's interesting that you mentioned video because the only way you can see television in New York City right now is if you have cable with the exception of one or two stations because most of the TV stations transmitted from the tower atop one of the World Trade Center buildings that is no longer there. So uh, 1010 Winds would, uh, of course, be one of the only ways you could get uh, information right now on uh, what's going on. So uh, a very surreal scene of uh, that word being uttered over and over again here. Uh, I'm outside City Hall uh, more than four hours after these uh planes plowed into the uh, Twin Towers and they collapsed. Uh, and the, the entire downtown area, uh, the only thing I can think of describing it as, it, it looks like a nuclear holocaust down here. Everything is covered in a, a thick, thick layer of gray and white debris. There is uh, papers that flew out of the World Trade Center uh, from the offices when they collapsed. They are all over the streets and the sidewalks. There's still a steady stream of people walking out of lower Manhattan looking dazed, confused, some 
injured, some crying. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge right now is a sea of people walking out of lower Manhattan across the bridge into Brooklyn. Uh, the bridge remains closed off except for emergency vehicles coming in here. Uh, moments ago, I just watched five fire trucks come into lower Manhattan, and on board them were literally dozens of firefighters sitting on any which space they could find just so they could get to the scene. Now, uh, while we are trying to comprehend what went on here, it's important to remember that the both buildings are still on fire and they are still billowing smoke. Of course, there's absolutely no elevator service in the building, so these firefighters uh, presumably are walking up dozens and dozens of flights of stairs to try to attack this fire. Some extremely uh, brave and heroic men inside those buildings right now trying to get things under control here. Uh, the emergency rooms, I'm told that uh, the downtown hospitals are pretty much filled to capacity and overflowing. Folks are uh, walking around the area. Every once in a while, you see somebody with uh, a, a, what we would call a triage ticket on them, which means that they were evaluated in an emergency room, they were treated, and then released. Uh, again, people just, just now beginning to comprehend the enormity of what happened here. Uh, you must understand that the World Trade Center buildings are home to about 50,000 workers every day, and uh, many of them might have already been at their desks when the first plane hit at a little bit after a quarter to nine. So uh, one can only imagine that the death toll is going to be uh, extremely high here. We can't get any sort of confirmation yet. And so, Steve, uh, as said, one of the big mysteries, and we simply will not have, as you mentioned, some of the rescue workers going into the building, perhaps oh, they'll give us some indication of what, that, uh, what it's like up there when they come down. That is 1010 reporter Steve Kastenbaum. We'll have a full recap coming up for you here. Just what did happen, this major terror attack in New York and on the Pentagon and elsewhere in Washington. We're going to check right now, and I'm going to put this other bit of information on the table, too. Two warships, uh, plus the National Guard, have been deployed to New York Harbor. Two warships have now been moved in. The president put the military in high alert, as we heard just a short time ago. Matt Ward is keeping us up to date because uh, travel is a big part of our story today. People trying to figure out how can they get where or can they go at all. Matt Ward? Well, it looks like pretty much the story is if you're trying to get into Manhattan, it's not a good idea at all. You've got uh, most of your venues there closed off, uh, including all the Hudson River crossings. In fact, they're still closed in both directions. So is the Battery Tunnel. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg bridges shut down as well. So is the Verrazano heading for Brooklyn, but open going over to Staten Island. And the uh, train service has been very uh, few and far between as well. Metro North just limited service out of Manhattan. Only limited ferry service as well out of town. You can catch it at Pier 11 and West 30th Street heading back over to New Jersey. Just limited service on Long Island Railroad trains out of New York City as well. And also, uh, again, if I didn't mention limited service on Metro North out of the city, Jersey Transit, they have service shut down completely on the Northeast Carter, the North Jersey Coastline, as well as the Raritan Valley Lines, and all the airports remain closed off till further notice as far as roads that are open. Very crowded on some of them, like Route 3 between 495 and the Garden State Parkway in New Jersey, and the parkway especially busy as well between 153 and exit 145. You may notice police presence, too, on many of the area overpasses. Ralph Howard, back to you. All right, that is Matt Ward, and Matt will be back every 10 minutes or so to keep us up to date on travel situation. We're straightening out the very latest about the apparently four planes were hijacked and used for these terror attacks today at the World Trade Center and at the Pentagon. We're getting the latest information on that. But uh, an unknown number of people have died at the World Trade Center. We can't even imagine how many at this point, but based on the devastation of the two towers being hit by two planes and then collapsing, it might be a huge number of people may have died. It's something we simply don't know. Uh, 1010 Wednesday reporter Eileen LaPalmer in Lower Manhattan. Eileen? Well, Ralph, right now I'm on Hudson Street and Dwayne Street. That's just a block north of Chambers Street where the police have shut it down and are not letting people south of that point. It's an odd scene right now. The panic of four hours ago where people were running through the streets covered in blood, screaming, panicking, has been replaced by an eerie calm. People are just standing along Hudson Street staring at the sky where the World Trade Centers used to be. It's as if they're trying to comprehend what has happened. Everyone is also standing in about two or three inches of gray and light brown soot. And there's a black a thick cloud of smoke, as we've been hearing. It's billowing over the uh, Manhattan, lower Manhattan, heading towards Brooklyn. In fact, it's blocking the sun at some points, so there's even a cloud that casts over the crowd here. Many people also just holding uh, masks up to their face. They're crying, trying to get in touch with their families, and they're also sharing their stories. I talked to one man who was in the World Trade Center Tower and had begun to evacuate when another blast occurred. We were down we were down on the eighth floor when the explosion hit, blew us back into the eighth floor offices. That's when I bust the window out. This gentleman here, he heard our cries for help. He heard us yelling, he just kept saying, Stand stand by, stay there. Somebody's coming to get you, somebody's coming coming to get you. And an hour later, that man was pulled out of the rubble in the World Trade Center by his friends. Um, he is obviously grateful and just marveling at the fact that he is still alive. Eileen LaPalmer, 1010 Winds, live on Hudson Street. 
All right, you're listening to live uh, coverage here on 1010 Winds, live coverage of the terrorism in New York, the two planes crashing into the World Trade Center towers. Those two towers basically gone now. They were later collapsed, the top portions of them. Of course, the rest of the buildings will have to be destroyed. And in Washington, a direct hit by apparently a hijacked plane in Washington. We're going to get an update on what's happening in Washington and with Doug O'Brien. And grab some pencil and paper because we've got numbers for American Airlines, United Airlines, and Doug will have for us, too. Live continuing coverage here on 1010 Winds. Here's Doug O'Brien. Yes, Ralph, let's do the telephone numbers first. American Airlines passenger information, 1-800-245-0999, 800-245-0999. United Airlines passenger info, 800-932-8555. St. Vincent's, which needs plastic surgeons and burn specialists, 212-752-4805. 212-752-4805. Nassau University Medical Center, 516-572-6348. 516-572-6348. There is a general metro area call for blood. EMS says, <coughs> pardon me, EMS says anyone can go to any hospital in the tri-state area to donate blood. Quickly, the situation in Washington. There are reports of fatalities in the Pentagon attack this morning. An airliner is believed to have hit it. It hit on the opposite side of the building from the Secretary of Defense office. We do not know any casualty count at this time. The Navy, however, has told a TV station that there are fatalities. And besides air travel being grounded around the country, great now has shut down its entire service nationwide. Ralph? All right, Doug O'Brien there with an update. We're going to go to Larry Cantor, too, who's also in our studios. Larry's been keeping us up to date, and things have been shut down or not happening here in the city of New York because of the awful tragedy at the World Trade Center. Larry? All right, Ralph. Lower Manhattan, for all intents and purposes, is shut down. People are being asked to leave Lower Manhattan and walk out. Just start walking north and then make your way back home from Lower Manhattan. Get out of Lower Manhattan, but do so calmly and just walk to the north. An emergency shelter, uh, emergency center, I should say, has been set up at Beth Israel Medical Center at 10 Union Square East. And that's on the third floor, Beth Israel Medical Center on 10 Union Square East. An emergency center set up on the third floor. Doug just mentioned that uh, you can go anywhere, any hospital to donate blood. That's one of three things that really need to be uh, called in right now. It's the blood, and we need doctors and nurses, and emergency personnel. Governor Pataki, not long ago, asked all emergency service personnel to help out. Well, obviously, it's a horrific situation, and it's an ongoing crisis, and we've activated our National Guard and emergency police, fire, and EMT services. We're coordinating with the, the, the White House and with the city government uh, to make sure that we have the ability to relieve the city police and fire uh, as they go through this. Mayor Giuliani says 50 hospitals at least have been pressed into service, and he expects that number to climb to more than 100. And again, all emergency personnel are being asked to help out. Nassau University Medical Center has declared a state of emergency and has called to work all its emergency personnel. The clinics at Nassau University Medical Center canceled for today. They're requesting that anyone able to donate blood head to the Blood Donor Center. This is Nassau County. In the city, you can go to any hospital to donate donate blood. And if you need more information about donating blood for Nassau County, 516-572-6348. St. Vincent's Catholic Medical Center, Lower Manhattan, has put out a call for plastic surgeons and burn specialists. And the number to call there is 212-752-4805. All doctors and nurses who work in Jersey City hospitals have been asked to simply report for duty. Now, the school situation in New York City. The children who normally are picked up by parents at schools should remain there until their parents come. Schools will stay open late to give parents enough time to get there. Staff will be there late as well. Security, principals, teachers, etc. Children who use the Metro card should remain in the schools until the transit system is fully operational again. There are some trains that are in operation, and Matt Ward will fill us in on that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, the transit system right now has outbound trains only. 
Children who use yellow school buses will be allowed to board buses as normal. However, bus drivers will be instructed not to drop off any children at a bus stop unless a parent or guardian is there to receive the child. If the parent or guardian is not present, that child will be bused to a nearby school in the district, and students will be kept there until parents are notified. Special education students who normally take buses home will be transported by yellow bus and dropped off as long as a parent or guardian meets the bus. Special ed students may be transported late because of the situation, and parents will be notified. Evening and after school programs have been canceled. There have been numerous bomb threats throughout the system, and because of that, schools are on a heightened state of alert. All children at the Children's Discovery Center, which is located in the World Trade Center, are fine, we're told, and the parents can pick up their children at St. Vincent's Hospital. CUNY has announced that all afternoon and evening classes have been canceled. Ralph? That is 1010 Winds reporter Larry Cantor along with Doug O'Brien here in our studios keeping us up to date. As Larry mentioned, we're getting an update on travel now. A lot of things are closed up or things just aren't moving in certain areas because of the tragedy, the terrorism attack. And if you just joined us, so you're listening to 1010 Winds, and also we understand listeners on K rocker hearing our reports as well on 1010 winds with the two planes a terror attack two planes apparently hijacked planes crashing into the world trade center this morning around nine o'clock one before nine one after later the two towers collapsed unknown number of casualties people dead or injured there another plane crashed into the pentagon is believed that too was a commercial plane that had been hijacked and uh, there are casualties at the pentagon also uh, some kind of bomb went off near the state department in washington basically shut down people sent home and um, the government basically shut down today in washington and in lower Manhattan, there is chaos still. We're going to our reporters there, but first, Matt Ward has promised with an update on the travel situation. Hey, Ralph, I've just noticed here on our uh, 1010 Winds Jam Cam Network, uh, Route 3 has been closed down eastbound side in the Meadowlands area. They're diverting traffic uh, right before you get down to the western spur of the Jersey Turnpike, east on Route 3. This seems to be the general theme. Anything coming towards the city is uh, blocked off, and uh, going away from the city is the way to do it. Limited service on Long Island Railroad out of New York City. Jersey Transit still suspended on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, and Raritan and Valley Lines. Amtrak has had no service on the Northeast Carter. The airports remain closed off indefinitely. Metro North no service coming into Grand Central Terminal, but limited service uh, out of Manhattan. As far as uh, some of the bridges go, coming to New Jersey, Bayonne Bridge, Gothels, and Outer Bridge are open, but they're closed going to Staten Island. All the Hudson River crossings are still closed in each direction. Midtown Tunnel, Queensboro Bridge are open to Queens, but shut down coming into Manhattan. Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg Bridges are closed in both directions, and the Verrazano is still closed, heading over to Brooklyn. As far as the Upper East River bridges go, they are open, uh, leaving Manhattan, or actually getting back over to Queens, but you can't get into uh, Manhattan along the Triborough Bridge. Ralph, back to you. All right, Matt Ward. Well, there's just an indication, though, that ever who did this and why they did it, uh, they probably are feeling some success at this point, not only for the horrible tragedy at the World Trade Center, the two planes crashing in there, but how they've tied up commerce in New York City and around the country. The markets are closed, uh, airlines are not flying, and uh, complete chaos in lower Manhattan. And again, we we have no idea what the casualty figure might be in lower Manhattan, but we are starting to get now some figures from the hospitals where some of the casualties were taken. Larry Cantor? Beekman Downtown Hospital reporting three people brought their dead on arrival. 20 in extremely critical condition, 30 in stable condition, 150 were treated and will be released. St. Vincent's Hospital is reporting two dead, 15 critical, and more than 165 other patients being treated. So the total death toll at this early stage, five, and that we could see go into the thousands. We just don't know. But those are the first casualty reports coming into 1010 Winds. Ralph? That is Larry Cantor. We just got this request from the New York City Police Department. An important request. New York City Police and other emergency personnel who are responding from locations north of the city, coming in from Westchester, Rockland, wherever, are to report to the George Washington Bridge Administration Building. New York Police and other emergency personnel responding from locations north of the city report to the George Washington Bridge Administration Building. That's located at 20 Bridge Plaza South in Fort Lee. That's on the Fort Lee side, 20 Bridge Plaza South in Fort Lee. Now, let's go to 1010 Winds reporter Stan Brooks in Lower Manhattan. Stan? Ralph, all the destruction and the death is causing all kinds of nightmares among people here who have new people who are in the World Trade Center or in buildings nearby. Paul Hoffman lives across the street from the World Trade Center, and he tells me uh, he's worried about the people who live in his building. I live in, uh, in a building a block away from the World Trade Center, and I'm afraid that Everybody that I know is gone. Uh, I was standing outside when the first plane hit. I knew it wasn't an accident. I, I knew an accident like that couldn't happen. I was standing outside when the second plane hit, and that's when I decided to get away. Um, I was basically trapped in the, uh, at my building. The uh, tree 
SAS unit was set up, the area was roped off, they weren't letting anybody out. And when the first building, when the, the bombs went off in the plane in the first building, the first building started to go, to go down, I ran and, and took cover. But everybody else that, that, that didn't have shelter, I'm very scared. I'm very afraid that they're gone. I found him at a phone frantically trying to reach people, uh, but this is the story all over the city, particularly down here in lower Manhattan. People waiting on lines for the phones that do work, trying to find out if their wife, their husband, their son, their brother, whatever relative or friend is safe, and nobody really knows, and it's just a chaos. And again, just hordes of people walking around uh, trying to get to subways that aren't running, and uh, I've just never seen anything quite like this. Ralph? All right, 1010 Wins Senior Correspondent Stan Brooks. It's a story after story after story after this awful tragedy here in New York. Of course, some leading questions as to who did it, why did they do it. The magnitude still unknown, just what the damage is going to be to that area of the World Trade Center, the damage to commerce, but even more important, the damage to people. The uh, thousands of people who have either been injured or killed or in some way hurt by this awful tragedy today. Just to recap, if you joined us, two aircraft, apparently hijacked aircraft, uh, crashing into the World Trade Center, making huge holes. Later, the top portions of both crashing another plane, apparently hijacked, uh, crashing in, um, against the Pentagon, setting off a fire there. And, uh, and there are casualties at the Pentagon as well. Another plane, uh, this was a United plane that was flown out of Newark, uh, crashed southeast of Pittsburgh. The belief is, we don't know, the belief is that might have been hijacked as well. That was carrying 38 passengers, two pilots and five flight attendants. There were passengers in all these other planes. Now, uh, at first, we were led to believe that the two planes crashed into the, America, uh, to the World Trade Center were the American. American Airlines planes that were uh, hijacked or missing. Uh, now there's not certain whose plane it was, but the important part is that four aircraft were apparently used in this terror attack, and at least four planes went down with passengers aboard in conjunction with this awful tragedy at the World Trade Center. 1010 Winds reporter uh, Sandy Klein is at the Jersey Center, Jersey City Medical Center. By the way, the Circle Line and other boats along the harbor have been taking people out of Manhattan across to New Jersey. Uh, Sandy? Ralph, I, uh, for just a second, if I could kind of personalize this for a minute. When I first heard about this and I was in New Jersey and couldn't cross the, the Hudson, I was sent to Newark Air, Airport, which was also a very eerie sight. They were evacuating the terminals. The airport, were, for all intents and purposes, was shut down. And then my assignment was to go to the Jersey City Medical Center. And I'm listening to winds as I'm driving, and it took me almost two hours to go from Newark to Jersey City. And I see this plume of smoke coming from the World Trade Center. And I didn't get the real impact of this incredible tragedy until I walked into the medical center through the ER, and I just stopped dead in my tracks. People running around, bodies in places, I, 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 people being tended to. I, here I am all alone in my car, and all of a sudden I'm in a scene of controlled chaos. And now I'm in the um, Public Affairs Department with William Doster, who's the Vice President for Development and Public Affairs. He's going to talk to you about the casualties and the injuries, uh, the injured parties that have been brought by ferry all along the Jersey waterfront. This hospital is on Code 1, which is an inter external, excuse me, external disaster. It is a machine finely tuned, and I would like, Ralph, now to put you on with William Doster. Hello. Yes, can you tell me just what's going on at your hospital? Sure. We, uh, we have seen uh, about 100 patients uh, starting at about 10 o'clock when the first one came over uh, on his own. Um, he was a, a burn victim about the upper body and face, but came, was able to come in on his own. Since then, um, our ambulances have... Um, uh, been going down to the Jersey City waterfront and transporting patients uh, from ferries that have been uh, crossing the river. I understand that uh, fishing boats and all kinds of voluntary uh, vessels have been uh, jumping in to help with the transport. Uh, and so we, we're bringing them up to the medical center, uh, which is the regional trauma center. And um, largely uh, what we've been seeing is, um, you know, walking wounded victims of, um, uh, you know, serious bumps and bruises about the upper head and body. We do have several very seriously injured patients right now. And, of course, that's changing every minute. Well, we thank you very much for the update. We'll go back to Sandy if we can for just a sure. moment. Ralph, yes, they Sandy. say they're bringing in more patients. It is just a phenomenal sight to watch, um, and I pretty much will park myself here for most of the afternoon. I have to say you guys have been doing an unbelievable job, um, and now I'm a little shaken after walking through the hospital, you know, and seeing what I've seen. It's just, um, it's just, it's extraordinary. Well, it's a horrible story, and I don't think it's sinking in for a lot of us at this point, and it will. Sandy Klein in Jersey City at the medical center there, and again, we really don't have any overall figure in casualties, but it's going to 
going to be into the thousands in terms of people dying and who knows how many people injured and, of course, the other impact on people. 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Pop is in lower Manhattan, too. Juliet? Yes, Ralph. In fact, I just came down from a 17-story view. I was on a roof of uh, one of the buildings here in lower Manhattan. Just an incredible scene. What you see coating everything is this whitish-gray soot. It's coating the sidewalks. It's coating the streets. It is coating the roofs. And if you can look uh, west to uh, Battery Park, uh, city area. It is all over that park area there. Where those two towers once were, there continues to be this billowing smoke. It just looks uh, like a naked skyline because there are no buildings there anymore. It is just that billowing smoke that continues. You do see emergency service workers and you see a lot of the papers that are still sort of fluttering around. Many of them have been even coating the street. And this is what came out of the offices earlier today when those planes hit and when those other explosions occurred. Uh, it looks pretty much like a ghost town when you look south from Worth Street, where I've been for uh, most of the day so far. Uh, there are very few people that are walking around there. You still see emergency vehicles going downtown. And I spoke to one of the maintenance workers in this building here, and she told me that she was out taking out the trash early this morning and actually saw the planes hit, and she saw people falling out of the building. They were jumping out of the building. Yes. You see the bodies coming down. And we were all right on West Broadway. You see them just jumping out of the building. They look like big rag dolls. She said it was horrible. Another man said that he saw somebody above the crash waving a white sheet or a flag of some kind, trying to get help. But then when it exploded, of course, it was all over. I'm also told that uh, patients are being ferried to the uh, Yankee ball field on Staten Island. Uh, that's where they're being triaged there as well. Ralph? That is 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Papa. Major mobilization going on in the city of New York to deal with a number of people killed or injured. And, of course, that's just the beginning of the story that's been unfolding now for just just about four hours time, around four hours ago, the uh, two aircraft slamming into the tower, uh, twin towers of the World Trade Center, the towers later collapsing at least the upper floors, and also a plane crashing into the Pentagon, another terror attack, no doubt, and uh, setting off a fire and explosion there, and casualties at the Pentagon as well. And again, we don't have any figures whatsoever, any exact figures, or even any real estimate of how many people may have been hurt or died because of these acts of terrorism in New York and at the Pentagon. Now, uh, let's go to 1010 Winds uh, traffic reporter Matt Ward, who's got an update because that's a big mess to travel in New York kind of trying to get in or trying to get out. Matt? Well, I'm just telling you, looking right now on the uh, 1010 Winds Jam Team Network, and nobody moving on the Bell Parkway on the westbound side up and beyond Pennsylvania Avenue heading towards the Mill Basin Drawbridge. Don't know if that's an accident, but there's just been a lot of traffic there, and that's been there for quite some time, too. In addition to that, Hudson River crossings are still closed in each direction. The Whitestone Bridge is closed both ways, but the Throgs Neck and the Triborough are open if you're trying to get over to Queens. Queensboro Bridge and the Midtown Tunnel are also open for those going back to Queens, but they're shut down coming into Manhattan, and that's been pretty much the theme, anything Manhattan bound closed. Although on the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges on the Battery Tunnel, they are still closed off in both directions. Verrazano is closed for those trying to get to Brooklyn, but open getting to Staten Island, and the Staten Island bridges are open getting back to Jersey, but closed trying to get on to uh, Staten Island. The airports remain closed off, just limited service leaving town on Long Island Railroad and Metro North, and Jersey Transit, they've uh, knocked out service completely on the Northeast Carter, the North Jersey Coastline, Raritan Valley Line, also to disruption of Amtrak along the Northeast Carter as well. Ralph, back to you. Well, we have a major problem, of course, in travel, and that's just part of the big problem that we have. 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum uh, in lower Manhattan again, giving us more insight into what's happening down there. And um, just how bad is the traveling situation? Well, I can tell you right now, it looks like the entire city is just walking home. The Brooklyn Bridge is a sea of people coming off the FDR Drive, walking down from Midtown, walking across the East River to their destinations. Uh, all of the crossings uh, have been closed off to vehicle traffic coming into the city right now. The only things coming in are emergency services vehicles. Now, the uh, New York City Police Department has mobilized officers from all the outer boroughs. One of the police officers told me that debris from the uh, Twin Towers had reached as far away as his precinct in Coney Island, that they saw papers landing uh, near the boardwalk that had come from this explosion. So that could just tell you how immense a situation this is here. Uh, the entire city, as you heard, Juliet Papa below uh, uh, Canal Street, uh, basically just covered in this thick layer of gray soot and debris uh, all over the place. I, I bumped into things, articles of bloody clothing, um, uh, triage uh, materials such 
such as um, ripped open medical packages and stuff like that. Uh, people were walking out, and the words you kept hearing over and over again uttered were, I, I, I thought I was dead. I thought we were gone. I thought this was it. People are in total shock. Here we are uh, almost five hours after this uh, began, and uh, people are still just trying to comprehend what happened here. Uh, one other thing I should note is that uh, because so many police officers have been called in from the outer boroughs to help in this rescue operation here, that the police officers from Nassau and Suffolk counties, as well as other outlying areas, have been uh, asked to come in, and they are responding uh, by units into the outer boroughs and are supplementing the NYPD patrols in the uh, outer boroughs while uh, in places like Brooklyn and Queens, while uh, the New York City Police Department tends to matters here. Uh, again, this is still very much an active scene right now. I've seen dozens upon dozens of firefighters getting to the World Trade Center area any way possible because both buildings are still on fire. The top halves of them have been completely sheared off and demolished, but I'm not sure how many stories up, but at least 40 or 50 stories are still standing at one of the buildings, and they are billowing thick black smoke, so firefighters are uh, performing some extremely brave and heroic acts, walking up those uh, dozens of flights of stairs, presumably to battle this blaze. Ralph, back to you. I can only imagine what it must be like in some of those floors of the World Trade Center, because we know there are casualties there. We know there's horrendous damage, and that's a story that will be unfolding as the time goes on. Uh, just to recap, two planes, apparently hijacked planes, crashing into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, later causing gaping holes, later the top portions of those collapsing, and another plane apparently hijacked, a commercial airliner crashing into the Pentagon. Four commercial planes in all apparently hijacked and used in this terror attack today. Uh, 1010 Winds reporter Terry Sheridan is at St. Vincent's Hospital, where some of the casualties have been taken, and we're going live to Terry on 1010 Winds. Okay, Ralph. Well, officially 184 have been brought here, 15 critical, two have uh, died, uh, but in the time that I've been here, about a half hour, there have literally been dozens of ambulances that have uh, come in and out, and they've come from all over the tri-state area. I've seen ambulances from Long Island, from Westchester, and from New Jersey. Now, a very important number, if you want to check if someone uh, that you that you love or that you know was brought here, the number is 212-604-7285. In addition, hospital personnel are outside the hospital to ask any questions. One thing, though, the, 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 and this is a good thing, the call for blood has been answered so well that they're asking people not to come to St. Vincent's now, uh, to go to St. Clair's Hospital. There's about 500 people in line uh, waiting to donate blood. If you were thinking of doing that, still do it. It's very much needed, but go to St. Clair's Hospital. Uh, they would bring in some buses to get them there earlier, but it's easier if you can just get there yourself. Uh, o and O negative are the two t blood types that they need specifically. Ralph, back to you. That is 1010 Winds reporter Terry Sheridan. He's at St. Vincent's, where again, they, the number, though, to call, as he mentioned, for blood donors, and again, they're moving people to St. Clair's, is 212-604-7285. Uh, 604-7285. Uh, Steve Kastenbaum mentioned emergency personnel. New York City police and other emergency personnel responding from locations north of the city are being asked to go to the Fort Lee side of the George Washington Bridge. That's a George Washington Bridge administration building. That's a 20 Bridge Plaza south in Fort Lee. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, another recap on the travel situation. A lot of you folks are wondering, can I get there or can I get home or what can I do? We'll have that for you. But uh, let's go to uh, schools, a big factor here, because New York City public schools are open at this point. And 1010 Winds reporter Larry Cantor has the latest on the schools. Yeah, let me get to the schools in just a moment. First, a few more items to take care of. Every state courthouse in New York being closed in just uh, 12 minutes. That according to the Office of Court Administration. That's every state courthouse in New York will be closed at 2 o'clock. Uninjured people who took the ferry to Jersey City from Manhattan are being bused to New Jersey's turnpike service areas, and the Red Cross will take it from there, arranging transportation. Those are uninjured people who were ferried to Jersey City. And they'll be taken to New Jersey turnpike service areas, and the Red Cross will arrange transportation from there. If you've got to have some cash today, banks apparently are closed, but the ATMs remain open. Now, for the school information, New York City Public Schools. Children who normally are picked up by parents at school buildings buildings should remain there until their parents come. Schools will stay open late to give parents enough time to get there, and staff will be there late as well. Children who use Metro cards should remain in school until the transit system is fully operational again, and it is coming back online, but it's not there just yet. Matt Ward will have, Ward will have more in just a couple of minutes. Children who use yellow school buses will be allowed to board buses as normal. However, bus drivers will be instructed not to drop off children at the bus stop unless a parent or guardian 
guardian is there to meet them. If a parent or guardian is not present, the child will be bused to a nearby school in the district, and students will be kept there until parents are notified. Special education students who normally take buses home will be transported by yellow bus and dropped off as long as a parent or guardian meets the bus. And special ed students may be transported late because of the situation, but parents will be notified. Evening and after school programs have been canceled, and schools in the area of the World Trade Center were evacuated this morning. Um, the chancellor will decide later. He hasn't decided just yet whether there will be school tomorrow. So keep it locked to 1010 wins. We'll give you all the information as soon as it comes in. Ralph? All right, that's Larry Cantor with the latest on what's happening here in the city and the school situation. We're going to get an update on traffic in just a moment again and then uh, go to uh, Doug O'Brien to tell us what happened in Washington and what's going on there because uh, the Pentagon was among the targets today, uh, too. And I'll just recap it all for you as we're going live here on 1010 Winds. And you may be listening to us on K Rock as well. We are simulcasting today our broadcast on 1010 Winds about the terror attack around 9 o'clock this morning with one apparently hijacked airliner crashing into one tower and about uh, 15 to 20 minutes later, another. A uh, plane uh, also apparently hijacked, crashing into the other tower, gaping holes in both of the twin towers. And then about an hour and a half later, uh, one tower collapsed and then the other, the, wet, the top parts of those two towers. We have no idea how many people were killed. There was one Virginia congressman who was saying uh, an estimate, and I'm not sure where that came from. It could be 10,000 people talking about the number of people killed at the World Trade Center and also at the Pentagon where another plane crashed into a section of the Pentagon and uh, casualties there. And also a plane that crashed southeast of Pennsylvania, a United plane that was uh, flying uh, from um uh, Newark, from Newark, flight uh, 93 from Newark to San Francisco. Now, as promised on 1010 Winds, an update on what the travel situation is. Here's Matt Ward. All right to our Transit Desk, Jersey Transit Rail Service still suspended on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Raritan Valley lines. Just limited service leaving town along on the railroad trains. Same deal with Metro North, too, but there's no service coming back into the city on uh, those venues. And uh, very limited ferry service out of town. They've had some taking off from Pier 11 and also West 30th Street. The airports, of course, remain closed. All the Hudson River crossings are still blocked off in both directions. I've been watching the George Washington Bridge for quite some time. Don't see any traffic up there. And the roads that feed into it are also a big mess. Route 4 East is closed at Jones Road, Inglewood. 46 is shut down east at 5th Street in Fort Lee. And the Jersey Turnpike is closed northbound side at Interchange 11. And so is the Newark Bay Extension eastbound side completely closed off. Whitestone Bridge is shut down both ways. But the Throgsneck and Triborough, they are open if you're trying to get over to Queens. You'll also be able to get back to Queens via the Queensboro Bridge or the Midtown Tunnel, but those lanes are closed off into Manhattan. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg Bridges and Battery Tunnel shut down each way, and the Verrazano is closed to Brooklyn, but open getting over to Staten Island. We're just hearing that the New York State Thruway is closed southbound side in Yonkers as you head down towards the Deegan vicinity, and also closures west on the LIE, the northern and southern state as well, heading up towards the uh, Queens-Nassau line. Ralph, back to you. I guess, Matt, the idea being that they're stopping people from driving in. Yes, so uh, if you're trying to leave, you're okay, but trying to come into Manhattan Manhattan, well, I shouldn't say you're okay trying to leave. It's tough, but coming into Manhattan, forget it. Well, the real point is don't try to do it. Yes. Uh, that is Matt Ward keeping us up to date on travel. Uh, Governor Pataki has called out the National Guard to help out in Connecticut. The Connecticut National Guard is on standby, ready to deploy equipment and personnel to New York to help out. Mayor Giuliani says more than 50 hospitals are now in service trying to deal with the casualties from those two planes, the terror attack on the World Trade Center this morning. He expects a number to climb as far as that goes. As we mentioned, not only was the uh, World Trade Center a target, today, but so was the Pentagon. And let's take a look at what happened in Washington. And here's uh, 1010 Winds correspondent, uh, reporter Doug O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Ralph. A state of emergency has now been declared in Washington. People are being told to go home, stay home, and stay off the streets. Telephone system working, as is the subway. As you've probably heard already on here on 1010 Winds, a plane believed to be a commercial airliner crashed into the north side of the Pentagon. Part of that building is collapsed. A Navy spokesman told WUSA-TV there were fatalities. There are seven critical injuries that are known, all of them severely burned. All government buildings, including the Capitol and the White House, have been evacuated and employees sent home. President Bush is not in Washington. Secretary of State Powell returning from, to the U.S. from South America. Other senior officials evacuated to an undisclosed location. Vice President Cheney and the National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice working with Federal Emergency Management Agency. Their plans are not disclosed as of this time. Various explosions have been reported in Washington, one outside the State Department, one outside the Supreme Court. There was a report of a hijacked Washington, D.C. Police Department airplane headed toward Washington. That was still hours ago. There's nothing been heard about it since. Ralph.
That is 1010 Winds reporter Doug O'Brien. We did hear from President uh, Bush uh, a short time ago. Actually, it was a taped statement because the president had been in Florida. We're told he was moved out of Florida after this all started happening. He made a taped statement rather than live and then uh, was moved again. So extra security, obviously, for the president. Let's listen to the statement that the president gave. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. Again, that's obviously President Bush, and that was a tape statement, as I pointed out going in uh, to that, that that was taped, and then the president was moved. Uh, they're taking extra precaution for the president. As Doug O'Brien pointed out a short time ago, there's a state of emergency in Washington as well. People are being sent home. Things pretty well closed up in Washington. That's the same for lower Manhattan. And uh, the just a devastating toll. The two twin towers of the World Trade Center, a symbol of New York, a symbol of power, a symbol of commerce, now a symbol of terror and a symbol of hate. We have no idea just how many people may have died or how many people might have been injured by those two aircraft crashing into the t Twin Towers of the World Trade Center uh, about four hours ago. One a little before nine, one after, and then later on, about an hour and a half later, those two towers collapsing. We're listening to continuing coverage on 1010 Winds. We also are being simulcast on 92.3 K-Rock, and uh, we'll continue to bring you up to date on all developments. Our reporters are standing by. We're giving regular updates every ten minutes on travel conditions because a lot of trains and buses are not happening. Matter of fact, the throughway just to mention, the throughway closed off at Yonkers. They don't want people coming into New York. And the same with some of the Long Island Expressways. And speaking of Long Island, 1010 Winds reporter Carol Dioria. News of the terrorist attack at the World Trade Center quickly spread. I found people on the Atlantic Beach Bridge, which is right at the Queens Nassau County border, watching the disaster. People were sitting on the railing of the bridge. They had pulled their cars over. They were watching the smoke billowing from the towers. Then a mile down the road on the Nassau Expressway, Route 878, some Long Island railroad workers saw the collapse right from there. We saw the uh, south building fall right in half and a white plume of smoke come up right after it. We what do you think about this? I mean... Uh, it's totally crazy. There's no way that you can protect against anything like this happening anywhere in our country, no matter how you try and safeguard it. We're just all over all the other countries trying to be policemen, and uh, this is the repercussions that we get from it. He said he feels betrayed that it's not safe to go anywhere. Carol Dioria, Tent and Winds on Long Island. Now, let's uh, get to some more on this uh, developing story. Again, the terror attacks in New York. Uh, 1010 Winds reporter John Montone, one of the first reporters in lower Manhattan as this was going on. And uh, John, and this, I hope this mic right here, and you have a guest with us as well. And Ralph, uh, this is Stu Morell. Who... No, that's not seen to be working. We're going to have to. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Uh, Ralph, this is Stu Morell, who is a neighbor of mine from uh, Glen Rock, and we ran into each other uh, down uh, fairly close to the World Trade Center. And Stu, you're actually heading to the building. 
Yes, I had a meeting that <clears throat> was scheduled for 9 o'clock. Fortunately, I had a, a, a call that detained me at the office later this morning. First, uh, first thing you saw? Well, the first thing I saw as I got out of the subway, the Fulton Street Station was closed and walked up from Wall Street was the enormous hole in the side of the of the second tower and uh, the smoke and flames billing out of both buildings. Where were you when the first tower collapsed? I was standing on, on Broadway facing the building. I was talking with an officer trying to find out how I could account for a, a co-worker and also for uh, a neighbor of mine that was in the, in the tower. Did, could you just describe to us what it looked like as the World Trade Center tower collapsed? It, it came down straight. I, the thing that strikes me now thinking about it is that it, it looked like, you know, one of these explosions that